Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brush Drugs with Mrs. Broderick. Today we're going to be doing a little painting project, but we're not going to be using paint brushes. We're going to be exploring a painting technique called pointillism. And this is when you use little dots of paint to create an image. So one artist who's really well known for this, his name is George Surratt. We're going to take a quick look at some of his paintings for a little inspiration. All right, this is one of his most famous paintings. This is called A Sunday on La Grande Jatte. It was painted between 1859 and 1891, okay? And if you look really closely, you can see all the little dots that he used to create this image. And this painting is huge. It takes up a whole wall at the Chicago Art Institute. It's absolutely beautiful. Can you imagine how many dots it took for him to do this? So one thing that George Surratt tries to do with his paintings is he tries to bring a little bit of science into this. And he does that by mixing colors using this technique of pointillism. So instead of using orange, he'll put red and yellow next to each other to create orange. I want to just quickly look at another painting by Vincent van Gogh. Now, this doesn't have as much pointillism to it, but you can definitely see the brush strokes that he's using and he's overlapping colors to create new colors and texture. This is another idea for you to keep in mind when we start painting. All right, here are the supplies we're gonna need for today. You're gonna need some paint. I'm using temper paint, but you can use watercolor if that's what you have. I'm gonna be using Q-tips as my paintbrush, but you could use the eraser of a pencil. You could also use the tips of markers if you don't have any of the other supplies, and a piece of paper. I would suggest starting with a smaller piece of paper because this might be a little bit more time consuming. All right, let's get started with painting, but you may need to put on your patience pants for this project because we're gonna be making a lot of dots. Okay, I'm going to be painting a beautiful butterfly today. Now you are welcome to also do that, but you can also paint whatever you wanna paint using this technique, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by using my black paint and kind of creating the outline of the butterfly, all right? Now you don't want huge globs of paint. And remember, you're gonna be refilling your Q-tip a lot. So I'm gonna start out by kind of creating the body of my butterfly. And you can do this very lightly to start. And then you can go back in and fill it in. I'm just doing little dots all the way around. All right, now I'm gonna do its wings. I'm trying to make it as symmetrical as possible, but that's okay if it's not. So think about how many dots George Surratt used when he created that painting that we just looked at. Can you imagine doing a painting like that? I can't. I can only imagine how long it took. I bet it took years and years. All right. So I've got the outline of my butterfly, all right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start to fill in the body with the black paint. So one thing you could think about doing is, see how as I continue to dot, my paint gets lighter and lighter? 
you could use that as part of your painting. If you wanted to make the wings of your butterfly or whatever else you're making red, you could start with really heavy paint here and just keep letting the paint kind of fall off your Q-tip and it'll get lighter and lighter and lighter. That could be really cool to try. But I'm just going around making little dots I'm gonna try to fill this space in with dark black. I don't want any of the white coming through, but later on, I am probably going to have some of the white shine through. And when you're doing this, you're gonna be able to see all the cool texture that you're getting with this. And I'm going to use my knowledge of color. I'm gonna use cool colors for its wings. So I've got blue and green ready to go. And then for my background, I'm gonna use warm colors. So I have red, orange, and yellow, but I may only end up using two of those colors because I can always use red and yellow to make orange, right? All right, so now that I have my outline, I'm ready to start digging into my butterfly. Okay, so we're just gonna work on painting this. Now this might take a little bit longer than when you would paint with a paintbrush just because it's a different technique that's a little bit more time consuming. But take your time and try not to rush through it, okay? make it look thicker and it rises up off the paper. And then even in the wings, I've used greens and blues and yellows to create different shades of color. 
This is a great opportunity for you to explore and experiment. Let's quickly check in with our mini artist, Mimi. Wow, Mimi, that is a beautiful butterfly. Did you like this project? I'll take that as a yes. All right, friends, well, I hope you enjoyed that project. I really enjoy this technique. I think it's a really great way to experiment and explore color. And it's a new painting technique that we really haven't done a lot with. So I wanna just quickly show you Mimi's painting and my painting. And I think that together they make a really great series. So I would encourage you to make more than one of these. All right, I can't wait to see what you come up with and I will see you next time. Bye.